Oh, uh, yes. Um, good evening. Uh, this is your uh, soul brother, Talib, of Operation Exodus Mississippi, a.k.a. Reality uh, t Temple Ministries on Earth. Um, I'd like to address, uh, you know, some comments that a sister by the name of Cocoonis Fox had made to our uh, ad minister brother, uh, Tali Gibbon Rod, under a video that he recently made a few de a few days ago. Now, um, excuse me. Now, I want to just say say something. You know, by addressing a few of these uh, quick comments that she made. And, uh, you know, because this is kind of a quick video I'm doing. But I just want to address these comments she made. Like she was saying that, you know, she was with, she was like saying something about, I was whoop you until you said it's a choice for us. That's where you lost me. You sound like Kanye. Well, what the brother was basically trying to explain to you, sister, and those of you as well, and YouTube land, who was listening to his video, that our only way out of this hell of over 400 years as an oppressed people here in America is through the ideals that we present from here at Operation Nexus Mississippi. You know, um, and the fact that we have a choice, you know what I'm saying? And and to try to compare his statement to Kanye is basically, uh, you know, deplorable because uh, it's something I really deplore because, first of all, you know, uh, when Kanye said that slavery was a choice, Basically, he said the opposite, you know, was that um, slavery was, in fact, a forced choice, not a free choice. See, that's the difference. See, when we when we when we make statements, we clarify what we say. Kanye didn't clarify what he said. That was a forced upon choice against our ancestors in which is the way he should have said it but obviously he didn't but we're saying that we have a free choice either to remain in this slave like condition or to continue on being in a slave like condition unless we make that choice to free ourselves from this slave-like condition, we will remain as slaves. That's all the brother was basically pointing out. You know, that's all he was pointing out. And if you have any type of, as you proclaim consciousness, you would understand that. And also, too, you know, uh, when you say, how is it a choice when we do not control the laws? First of all, this is why we presented this ideal to you in the first place. To those of you who claim you want separation from white folks, who claim that you want to, you know, um, have our own black schools, our own black businesses, our own black neighborhoods, communities, and this and that and all this other stuff, okay? Which sounds good, but it's not totally reality because we're still in America. But we can isolate ourselves from the racism that affects us and what goes along with that racism. If we take control of a state such as Mississippi in terms of its politics by quarantining ourselves away from the rest of America, where we can utilize our people's voting power in that state, okay, to be able 
to carve out a reality for us where we can create new laws that will work in our favor. And like me and the brother said countless times before, that not only laws that Caucasians would have to uh, respect, but would also have to abide by, well as respect, okay? And therefore, you say, how is it a choice, once again, when we do not control the laws? First of all, that way we will be able to control our political situation by carving out a sanctuary such as Mississippi. That would change that. That would negate that argument altogether. So my thing is this. When you also say, she goes on to say as well is that whites don't have special privileges. They have special privileges over black people. Let me say this here. Look at this shutdown, this government shutdown we in, okay? It's been going on over 30 days with this government shutdown. Do you see them government workers with pink skin on, on their bodies having any special privileges? Let alone over black folks, but over anybody or anything else? All they got, all they focusing on is how in the hell they going to pay their bills, they rent mortgage, and all this other stuff. And how they going to keep food in their refrigerator or to keep from being put out on the streets and being homeless. That ain't got, that don't sound like no special privilege in terms of white folks to me. If anything, the upper echelon of their own, uh, you know, race has denied them in spite of even with some of them you know uh getting outraged about it in the media but they steadily those in the higher action line so far steadily saying hey we don't care nothing about that all we care about is this five some billion dollar wall that trump is talking about so y'all just gonna have to hold off but, hey, they doing whatever they got to do to survive. Do that sound like a special white privilege? And how, and, and how can you even keep saying that, you know, see, first of all, black people is already at the bottom. You can't have no special privilege over something that's already, you know, at the bottom and that's oppressed. Something that's already ain't got nothing, you know, basically. <laughs> and then, first of all, when you say special privilege over black people, you got to understand what you're talking about. You got to understand that not only if they did have special privilege, they would have special privilege over other darker people in this country as well. You know, when you said, uh, you know, that they have black uh, privilege over special privilege over black people. You know, they don't they don't have no special privileges because if that was the case, then they would be making they would be controlling the laws that dictate black people's lives in this country. When you want to talk about ger gerrymandering laws, housing discrimination laws, uh, job discrimination laws, certain uh, clauses that still put in place to uh massively over incarcerate us you know what i'm saying so no they don't have control over none of that only those ones in the high asher line do and that's what we have been trying to point out from this platform of oem especially to those of you in the black conscious community you know who cannot seem to understand that this is not so just merely a race problem this is a problem as well in terms of economics that we dealing with. Because we are in a situation right now, in a cap, not only in a capitalistic situation, but under a dictatorship that is called capitalism in this country. You see, so, uh, no, the middle class 
and poor whites do not have no control or privilege over black people. Okay, as a matter of fact, as far as the high echelon is concerned, and I'm pretty sure if you could open up your eyes, you would see as far as this, the high echelon of white people are concerned, that they're just as equal as those dark skinned ones, which is us at the bottom. You see what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that I, and also in response, uh, you know, when you said that you are in favor of the Mississippi campaign, which is well appreciated, but you made one statement that stood out that I have to address when you said, but we all have to be on the same page. No, it's not going to take 44 plus million of us dark skinned descendants of slaves born here in America to be on the same page. It's not going to take that. All this is going to take, it's just a few, just a few, even a few hundreds of thousands of us or, or a quarter million of us to make this happen. That's all we need. And once we set the tone, everyone else will follow right behind. Like it's always been, like it was during the civil rights movement. Like it was during the struggle for freedom from chattel slavery, like it was, um, you know, during other periods of times of our history in this country as a people, whenever we call ourselves trying to rise up in terms of struggling for freedom and equality as a people, you know, so like I said before, although it's going to have to take a collective effort, I agree with that. 1,000%, 1, but it's not going to take 44 plus million of us, okay, to make this idea of Operation Exodus Mississippi come off the ground. As a matter of fact, we have resigned to the fact that it's not going to take, of course, 44 plus million of us to be on the same page as you would say. You know, so, I mean, you know, and, and, and then, um, you know, my thing is this, you know, it's like we have to understand and realize that as a people, you know, um, I also want to correct something, go back on correcting something that I said just a few minutes ago, you know, uh, back to Kanye West. Yeah. When he made that statement, I didn't mean that he didn't exactly know what he was talking about. But he was not aware in the way that he made the statement. Because what he should have said was it was a forced choice and not a free choice. See, it's the difference between a forced choice and a free choice. Today we have two choices, at least compared to our ancestors, okay, when it comes to that matter, you know, and uh, like I said before, um, at the end of the day, we do have a choice of free will to a degree where we can get to the point of totally taking our own destinies into our own hands as a people. Today, we do have that choice sister and to those of you the rest of you listening in youtube land we do have that choice you know and and uh i mean you know but you have to open your eyes up you have to open your eyes up and get out of that 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 black conscious state of mind because it's not getting none of us anywhere it, it wasn't getting me anywhere that's one reason why I eventually emancipated myself from that uh, school train of thought, you know, because it's not getting us nowhere. I mean, we don't have no concrete plan under that constructive thought pattern on how we going to end our oppression as slaves in this country, you know, and, and, and see the thing about it is, is that, you know, um, we have to wake up lies that 
If we look back on all these pro-black organizations, whether it be the Nation of Islam, the Moore Science Temple of America, the Nubian Nation, um, you know, the comedic organizations that's been around, uh, the so-called African Egyptologists organizations or whatever, um, the Pan-African movement or whatever, you know, even the Black Panther Party, the new Black Panther Party, all these in, in, in RG and B nation and all that, that ain't that ain't did us no good. We still are under the press people, still up under the up under the uh, iron fist of our slave master oppressor for for nearly five hundred years. It still ain't got us nowhere, but yet. When we present this idea of Operation Exodus Mississippi, just because of that fact, you quick to deny it, but you haven't even tried to see if it'll work. You haven't put it to the test. Like we put all these other things to the test that ain't work for us. You see, so the point is, is this, is that we have to understand and realize that it's important for us, you know, instead of making foolish accusations and saying, oh, this ain't going to work and we ain't never tried it. To even see, you haven't even tried to see if it worked. You know, it's really fruitless to even speak on, to say that it don't work when you haven't tried it. You know? We have uh, all the ingredients. And then for you to say, sister, that, you know, this, uh, for you to sit up and say that uh, the brother uh, is basically, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, was speaking out of frustration, you know, <laughs> in terms of this idea of Operation Mississippi being concerned, first of all, you have not proved that. He was speaking out of frustration. You you haven't you didn't bring no tangible proof or evidence to show that he was speaking out of frustration. See, we deal with concrete f uh, facts from this platform, just to let you know, you know. And 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 see, and see the thing is, is that once we let you know concretely. And directly where we coming from from this platform it's still up to you the whole things in question which is your right but the thing is at the end of the day just like many people have not been able to prove that where we're coming from at this platform is fruitless they haven't came up with no tangible evidence and if anything else no one has been able at all other than to say things as you, as the sister said, as far as, you know, those who have already uh, made comments like uh, the Operation of Exodus Mississippi is fake, uh, the Mississippi campaign is not going nowhere, or it's a pipe dream, or it's something that's been made out of frustration, like the sister was basically saying, but you haven't come with no tangible proof to show this you know and if anything people that have commented to actually speak on this directly as it is have said that hey everything that's been put presented is correct if anything as far as the responses in numerous cases that we've gotten that is correct and that and no one saw no error in it see you haven't been able to prove the errors in this ideal. You know, and like I said before, going back early, speaking in this video is that we came up with this ideal because all the other things that we tried to totally liberate ourselves with as black people failed us miserably. You know, especially with these religions, whether you want to call it Islam, Hebrewism, uh, Christianity, Judaism, 
and so forth and on, you know, has failed us. Let's just face it. You know, we still find ourselves at the bottom. You know, but when we present an ideal like obtaining the state control of the politics of a state, that's, I mean, I mean, and, and then you want to say that that's going to be difficult. You haven't even tried to see. I mean, if anything, with a state behind us, things will work out a whole lot better than, than everything else that we've tried. Because then, see, we will have a state to back us when it comes to negotiations with the federal government when it comes to negotiating uh, trade with other states, since those of us want to have our own black businesses, we could uh, negotiate commerce and trade. Those of us that want to still reach out to the continent of Africa, we have that option with a state behind us, see? And along with many other possibilities that we could imagine, you know? And so... This is the thing that we're coming with to you from this platform of Operation Exodus Mississippi. You know, and hopefully you will understand this, you know, and also to my sister Cocoon, this Fox, you will understand this clearly. Just open up your eyes and see. This can work if we come commonly and collectively together. And like I said before, we do not need we do we clearly do not need a um you know 44 plus million of us we do not need all of us you know and in any struggle far as the people on this earth is concerned whenever they wanted they to be liberated from their oppressors that has been the same similar case for thousands and thousands of years and in our case it's no different once we put it, put it to work that we could unify with just all it's just going to take is hundreds of thousands. That's all we need. Or at least just a quarter of a million. That's all we need. Even just let's say that the most two million of us. That's all we need to make this happen. We don't need no whole bunch of us. Like I said, once we get this off the ground and get this going, Everybody else will follow right behind. But I'm going to say this, though. It's okay if they follow behind, but they're going to have to help do the work, too. Because if they don't help do the work, they just not going to be able to comfortably sit back and benefit off our progress from this platform. Like our people were able to benefit off the struggle and, and blood and sweat of those who uh, struggled for us to accomplish the little gains that we did from the uh, civil rights movement. That's not happening from this platform of OEM. I just want to make that clear. That's just not happening. So, you know, like I said before, you know, um, however, uh, you know, I, that's all I just basically want to say and point out. You know, as to the comments, especially with, with the sister made in regarding in critiquing our brother Talik, you know, who is just simply, as we always do, pushing it, promoting this uh, message of Operation Exodus Mississippi so that we can free ourselves for once and for all from our uh, nearly 500 year slave oppressor. If we really truly want to be uh, you know, free from our oppressor, especially to those of you in the black conscious community who always make these same claims. So um, with that said, um, to those of you who are listening in the comment section or to those of you who are listening through our social media and Facebook and the rest of YouTube land, um, I say, uh, you know, I will be making some some more videos soon, very soon. But uh, I just wanted to just put this out here quickly. 
you know, because this needs to be addressed to our people in the conscious community, especially as well as the rest of us, you know, who's watching uh, this uh, live hangout. So uh, for that said, um, I'd like to leave y'all in the words